Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at another user or viewer requested application for uh, your Docker or home server setup. Uh, this one is called Grossy, and it says that it is a web-based self-hosted groceries and household management solution for your home. And it does a really good job of uh, letting you create shopping lists, keep inventory of say food or supplies, or uh, basically anything that say maybe a prepper might want uh, to have to keep track of all of their resources that are available to them. Um, obviously this isn't going to be just for preppers, but as I was going through and kind of getting familiar with the application and that sort of thing, uh, it really just kind of jumped out at me that this is the kind of thing that somebody who's doing uh, prepping uh, for whatever reason uh, would really want to use to make sure that they've got uh, tabs on basically all of their inventory and supplies and things like that. Um, there is also a Windows desktop version uh, of this application um, that you could just run as a Windows application, but it would only be available, I believe, on that Windows application or that Windows desktop, uh, whereas this would be available on the network um, uh, and possibly even remotely as well. However, there are a few little caveats with remote accessing. You can access it remotely with no issues, but um, updating things uh, from, uh, from say like a domain name uh, where you've uh, maybe ported this through traffic or something like that, uh, there's a known issue with uh, uh, without working on a reverse proxy setup. Um, so this would be good for, um, you know, doing all of your management at home, I suppose, and then creating a, sh a shopping list and then going to the store with that shopping list on your phone, um, that kind of thing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, remote management through the reverse proxy isn't uh, exactly working at this point. And I think it's something they've been working on for quite some time now. So with that introduction out of the way, let's jump over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so here we are on the Grossy website. Uh, here is what I read earlier, uh, that it's a web-based self-hosted groceries and household management system for your home. Uh, it does, It is open source and it's uh, apparently built with passion, uh, whatever that means, but um, it uh, it is open source so you can go in and manipulate it, pull your own fork, do what you wanna do with it. Uh, and of course you do all that through GitHub, uh, but we're not gonna do that. What we're actually gonna do is close this and we're gonna jump over uh, to hub.docker.com like we do so, so often on this channel. And we're gonna take a look at the Linux server distribution of Grossy here. And this is uh, what I've managed to get up and running uh, with very, very little issue. Uh, there's kind of a learning curve, but I'll hopefully point you in the right direction to get that under control as well here. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do obviously uh, is grab this Docker Compose uh, version 2.1 schema. We're gonna copy that. And of course, jump over to Portainer uh, where we're gonna go into stacks and create a new stack. So we'll go over here and we'll click on add a new stack and we'll paste this in. And then of course, we've got to give it a name. So we'll go ahead and do that. And um, so then uh, we can go ahead and start filling in uh, some of these other lines. Of course, the first seven lines, we don't have to do anything with. Uh, that's pretty standard stuff. If you watched any of my videos in the past, usually it's about the first six or seven lines are all pretty standard, just building the application. Uh, below that, we get into the PUID and the PGID. That's gonna be for users and groups uh, on your server. Uh, if you're not familiar with how to do that, what I'll do uh, is I'll just open up Putty here and uh, we'll drag this up. So here we've got Putty and what we're looking for here is the, the user and group ID of the admin account that you're using on Portainer right now, which isn't as complicated as it sounds, I suppose. So uh, up here in the top right-hand corner, uh, you're gonna look up the ID for that user name. So uh, what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and get logged in, uh, log in as root like so. And again, uh, we, like I said, we're gonna look up the ID. So we're gonna type in ID space and we'll type in admin because that's the user account that I decided to use. Uh, so we'll do that. And here we can see that my user ID or my UID or my PUID, uh, all of those are interchangeable, uh, is 998. And my GID or group ID or PGID is 100. Uh, so I can go ahead and change those right there. Uh, right here, the next line is time zone. So of course, uh, we're gonna fill that in like so. And uh, below that, we've got uh, a volume that we need to mount. Uh, basically, what we need is a configuration folder. Uh, if you followed my other videos, uh, you'll know that I've got a configuration folder on my Open Media Vault setup that I've shared on the network. And we'll jump over to uh, Open Media Vault right there. We'll go to our shared folders. And right here is the absolute path uh, uh, that we're looking for for this configuration 
folder. If you don't have the absolute path, you can hover over this top bar here, click the drop down on any of them. They'll all do the same thing. Go to columns and toggle absolute path. Uh, that will then give you uh, this column right here. So then we can right click and go to inspect. And then we can see that that's already highlighted. So we'll go ahead and copy that and close. We'll go back to Portainer. We'll paste this in here and we'll append it with uh, Grossi, just like that. Uh, below that, it's uh, set up on port 9283. That's a fairly random port, so there's a good chance you don't have anything else on there at the moment. So you can leave that, you can change it to whatever port you'd like. Of course, as long as you stick within the port range that's allowed. Um, so once you've got all of this, um, I guess the only other thing I should say here is if you've got your server set up in swarm mode, uh, version 2.1 won't work. You'll want to change that to at least version 3. Uh, so once you've got all of that set up, uh, then you can scroll down and click on deploy the stack. We'll give this a minute to load and then we'll come back and uh, take a look. Okay, so there we go. It is all loaded up and ready to go. So we can go ahead and click on Grossi there. We can come over and take a look at the logs. Uh, it is building some stuff in the background, so we will want to give that another minute or two to load. Uh, and once it's done here, it should say something like, I think services.d is done, uh, just like that. So uh, now that that's done, uh, we can go ahead and open a new port, or sorry, a new tab rather, and we'll go to 238, E3. All right, so here we are uh, on the login screen. This is a good sign. Uh, this tells us that it installed properly. The uh, admin or the username is admin. The password is also admin. And here we go. Uh, now we're all logged in. Um, and so there are some things in here that initially when I was going through this were uh, a bit confusing. They weren't working right. Uh, I was just having a lot of issues. And that's because uh, when I wanted to go in and um, deal with uh, tasks or uh, equipment or uh, inventory, uh, any of these kinds of things. Uh, it's kind of, the first thing you have to do is go down here to this manage master data. Um, and uh, you'll wanna go through and set up uh, products, uh, locations, stores, uh, things like that down here first. Uh, so locations, uh, this is going to be locations in your in your house, in your office, in your wherever you're setting this up for. So like by default, uh, fridge is in there, but you might also want uh, pantry. Uh, you might want uh, freezer. Oops, oops, that doesn't even go there anyway. Uh, freezer. Uh, so and then you could check is freezer uh, because then it will start manipulating the data as far as. Uh, how good the, the like say the, the food is, for instance, uh, based on when it was pulled from the freezer. Um, so that's uh, yeah, and this is adjusted according to the product settings there. So we can go ahead and say uh, freezer. Uh, we might have um, ah, man, I, I don't even know a bathroom. Oops, again uh, under add. Uh, we might oops, almost did it again there. Uh, let's say closet, for instance, I don't know, but you're gonna come up with all the locations where you might store things, uh, whether it's food or materials or or inventory or, or whatever the case may be. You'll wanna go and set up your locations first. Uh, same thing with, uh, say for like uh, stores, uh, you know, you might, uh, maybe, you, maybe you'd shop on uh, Amazon. Oops, so maybe you'll end up buying some of your products from there. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe you've got a Kroger in the area that you shop at. Um, so you would just go in and continue to add stores. Uh, let's say uh, we've got a Safeway that we shop at like that and click save. Um, so you might have uh, several locations where you purchase things. So you go ahead and put that in stores. Um, quantities and units. Um, so by default, there's packs and pieces. Uh, there, you might also wanna have uh, boxes. Uh, you might wanna have um, bags. Uh, whatever, however you might want to buy things, whether it's by the pallet or by the crate, uh, we can add that in here as well. Like so, so now we've got several different uh, quantity units for when we're buying things. Uh, so when we go into say products, uh, you know, we might have um, uh, oatmeal. Of course, you can get very, very granular with this. Um, you can, um, actually I should point this out now that we're in products. Uh, you can give it descriptions. Uh, you can say, what, what store do you wanna buy this from by default? 
Um, minimum stock amount, how many do you want to have in stock? Uh, we'll say one. Um, and let's see, best before days opened, you might, you know, this might be uh, 30 days. Um, quantity uh, purchased might be uh, a bag of oatmeal. Uh, quantity uh, unit stock, uh, we might have that in a, in a pallet maybe. Um, but one of the things that you will notice here is there's this little camera icon. Now that camera icon will only work if you're on a secured system. Sorry, I had to pause there for a second. So this will only work if your local host is secure, I believe. Um, or, um, and that's, that's if you wanted to use, say like your webcam or something like that to take a picture of a barcode. Now you can also access uh, the application on your phone just by going to the URL for your local, uh, for your local server. So again, I'm on, you know, this 192 address. So in my, uh, Chrome, I would go to 192.168.1.238 on port 9283. Then it would pull up this exact same thing in, um, in like a, a phone format. And then you could uh, use your phone to take pictures of the barcodes on the products that you've got on hand already. Uh, if you wanted to go so far as to use barcodes uh, for all of your stuff, that's an option there as well. So that's the only reason I bring that up uh, is because there is uh, some, there are some limitations. Yeah, see, it won't even let me close that out now. Uh, there are some limitations to the barcode usage um, with the way this is set up. So that's just something to keep in mind. So you can uh, manage your inventory here for stuff you've already got on hand, uh, chore tracking, uh, you can uh, create chores, assign them to different people on different days. Uh, there's a lot of that kind of stuff going on in here as well. Uh, and then once you do stuff like that, uh, you can then go to the calendar and you'll be able to see when certain people are assigned to different tasks for chores and things like that. Uh, so overall, it's a very robust system. There's just a lot of granularity to the setup and it can be kind of tedious if you don't know about going to the master data first. Uh, I really missed out on that. Um, the other thing that I wanna mention here is when you go up here and you want to uh, say manage users. Um, so let's say, uh, let's, let's create me um, right, so that worked just fine. Now, if you had this set up through traffic on a reverse proxy, it would not work. Uh, you would type in all that information and click save and the screen would just flash and nothing would happen. Uh, that's a limitation of the software at this point. Uh, there's nothing that you or I can do about that without pulling a fork and, and working on the code ourselves. So that's just something to be aware of. Uh, the same thing goes for um, creating inventory, managing inventory, things like that. Uh, it doesn't work well on a reverse proxy. Uh, I don't know if that's fixed in the Windows version, but that's how it is on this version. And I just need to make you aware of that. I think with all that being said though, I think that pretty much wraps up the, the minutia of how to get started. Uh, once you kind of get rolling with it, it starts to make more sense. And then you can uh, really dive in there and get going with uh, whatever it is you want to do here uh, in Grossy and its setup. Okay guys, so there you go. There's how to set up Grossy uh, in Docker and, and of course Portainer, how, whatever you wanna call that uh, on your home server. Um, it's, an easy, it's an easy thing to set up. It's just the, the getting it kind of configured uh, once you're logged in is a bit more tedious. And that's why I took a few extra minutes to try to explain that uh, the best I could with my knowledge of the, the limited amount of inter or time that I've interfaced with this. Uh, it's definitely one of those things that kind of, once you get going with it, it starts to make more sense and why they did the things they did. So uh, with that being said, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I, I know I've had at least one person request uh, a setup video for this. So I wanna go ahead and get that out there. Um, and I think that pretty much covers everything. If I missed anything, uh, definitely leave that in the comments down below. Um, there will be uh, all the information that's tied to this will be in a blog post uh, that's also linked in the description. Um, so if there are updates or things change or I got something wrong, I will update the blog post with that information. 
Um, also, while you're down in the description taking a look at that, there will be a couple of links uh, that would be cool if you would take a look at. One is for coffee, it's a one-time tip jar. If you found the video helpful, want to kick me a couple of bucks, uh, that'd be a great way to do that. Uh, it just goes straight to my PayPal, but then we can kind of have a, a little social interaction with that. Um, there's also, uh, of course, Patreon. I've got a few different levels of uh, patron memberships there. I will say the $5 level will give you access to a Discord or a members only Discord server uh, where we can just talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, of course, there's also some uh, merch down below, but it's kind of shipping uh, kind of slow right now with everything going on. Uh, but if you wait till after this whole COVID thing has died down a little bit, that might be something to consider as well. There's stickers and phone cases and things like that. So I think that pretty much wraps up everything for this video. So with that being said, uh, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.